Okay, so let's let's begin. Part one: graphic design theory. Just a little bit of theory on graphic design. <laughs> okay, so you need to ask some questions. For example, what is the objective of the communication? What needs to be said first? and then needs to be said next. How do you want the eye to flow through the page? That's certainly something that a marketer has never had to ask. How do I want the eye to flow through this page? Right, as marketing students, you probably have only made two things, mostly. Word documents and PowerPoint presentations, isn't it? But never really designs that have to... Maybe you've done a design for advertising. Have you? You've done a poster, maybe, yeah, or a, yeah. maybe a poster. Okay, and, and there you would have learned some design or advertising uh, theories or principles. But we're going to talk a bit more about that. Who are you speaking to? What is the tone of voice? Look at these two pictures here. They both have a tone of voice. What would you say is the difference between the tone of voice? Obviously, there's no one speaking, but they still have a tone. Of voice. <coughs> they still have a personality. The picture has a personality that has a tone. What would you say is the difference between the two? Let's start with the one on the right. What words would you use to describe the tone of voice here? Aggressive. Mm, mm, that's a good word. There's a, there's a great word that starts with an A. Mm, not aggressive. It's A S. Ah, yes. Assertive. Meaning, you're going to do this. Come on. You know, what does it say? I want you for the US Army. Very assertive. What would you, would you say the one on the left is a certain? Calming. That's a great word to use for that one. It's because it's dealing with beauty products, isn't it? This one's dealing with getting guys for the army. So they're getting them ready with that, you know, assertiveness of the army. Imagine you use this term to try and sell beauty products. <laughs> we want your face on our cream. You know, it wouldn't work. So you need to consider tone. Tone of voice. Uh, with, imagine you use this tone of voice to get guys to the army. <laughs> right, that wouldn't work. So you need to consider tone of voice in your design. Okay, then you also need to s this consider, uh, the, have you ever heard of this saying which says, form follows function, or function follows form, which one is it? Which one is it? <laughs> is it form follows function or function follows form? Okay, anyways, you first need to think about your strategy, your plan. What information do we need to get across? Who do we want to communicate with? Uh, are we going to communicate using an advertisement or a newspaper? Or what objective do we have? That's the function. Then we can decide. So function follows, a form follows function. So function is first. What do we want to do? Then, based on that, we determine what we're going to do. Okay? Strategy, action. Okay. Now, if it, now we're going to talk about how people read, how their brains and eyes work. A lot of design theory is based on how people think, how people see. Yeah. So, let's first talk about fonts. We've discussed little, a little bit about fonts. When it comes to print design, this one on the left works the best. Can you remember what it's called? This style of font. The one on the left, what's it called? It's called serif. Serif. It's because it's got these little, uh, little legs on the side. It's got these little points that come out. Serif font. Better on print. Whereas this one, known as sans serif, it's better on digital. Better on devices. So you need to choose one based on what you're designing for. Sometimes you can you can use a serif fonts for design uh, for online, but you wouldn't use it as the the body copy font. You would only use it as the headings. You use it as a heading, and then you would use sans serif for the body copy. Okay. Okay. Then you need to know this term. It's called uh, a type size. I'm sure you've heard of it before. Uh, different fonts look different depending, so you might have two fonts next to each other, they have the same font size, but the one is bigger than the other one. Have you noticed that before? I've noticed it. For example, Calibri versus Arial at 11 font size. Calibri is smaller. 
Anyways, that's an important thing. Leading. This term called leading. You need to know some of the terms. Leading is the difference between, or the different spaces between, the lines. So, another word for it is what? Line. Spacing. It's also called leading. Okay? This one is called kerning. This is the spaces between uh, certain um, letters or lines, um, character spacing. This one is called tracking. This is when you space out all of the different, you space all of them out equally. Okay, that's called tracking. Sometimes you'd want to do this. Let's say you're doing a design and you type out, we mean Word, we never, with Microsoft Word, you never really do this kind of stuff because you just type. But with design, you need to maybe fit. You need to fit a word in between two things. And then it's too big, so then what can you do? You, you, you decrease the character spacing to get it to fit. So those are tools that you may have never really used, which you can now use, or should use. Important to choose high quality fonts. With high quality fonts, you often have a lot of variety like this. You have like Garamond, there's so much variety. There's a regular, there's italic, there's the Garamond expert, there's the semi bold, there's the uh, italic, there's the semi bold, italic, there's the. You see all the various varieties you have. Whereas if it's a very low quality font, you'll only have one option regular, or regular and italic. Okay, check this out. Check the difference between the serif and the sans serif on the screen. Which one would you say reads easier? Wouldn't you say so? It's easy to see, isn't it? So that's just an example. And um, please, don't, when you write blog posts, don't do this. Don't write them like this. Please. Okay? Only if it's a poem, then you can make it... Uh, like this. Unless there's a specific, let's say you're writing a blog post, and there's a specific quote you want to put in between. Then you can use the central alignment. But generally what you want is you want this type of alignment. This is, you would use this alignment maybe in an advert, something small, uh, as I said, this one for poetry. And you wouldn't really use, you don't use justified texts online. You know justified texts? Yeah, that's more for academic writing. Okay, how do we read? Here you can see that our brain reads like this. It reads from left to right, and so we need to use this principle, especially in South Africa, we read from left to right. So if you're designing for South Africans, you need to think about where to place various uh, images in order to, f to take advantage of this flow of people's eyes. So here's an example of a website. What is usually in the top left corner of all websites? Yeah? What? The logo. The logo, yes. Why? Why is it there? Is it there just for no reason? Why isn't it at the right? Why isn't it at the bottom? Why isn't it in the middle? Why is it at the top left? Because of the way our eyes work. The first place we go is the top left. So immediately we're establishing our identity, our brand identity. Okay, it's okay if it's in the middle, that's also okay, but uh, usually it's in the left. And then, check what, check what Apple has done. They've placed their product right in the center, because they know that the eye is going to go from there to the center, and then it's going to go down to the bottom, and here they've got quite a lot of elements that you can click on. Can you see that? They've used that strategy. So think about that in your design. Okay, let's talk about color. Okay, there are three different ways to understand color. When I first got involved in design, I had no clue what people were talking about when they talked about Pantone. What is Pantone? Oh, it's a type of color. Or it's a type of color, um, it's a way of talking about color. Okay? Or it's a system, it's a color system, let's call it that. So Pantone is usually what you would use for painting, physical Physical types of color. So, if you go to the hardware store, to the paint shop, and they give you these swatches, maybe you've seen it before, and there's all these different colors on it you can choose for your paint. That is the Pantone color. So, it's got a number like that, Pantone 376. You would use that color. Okay? That's a specific color system. Then there's another color system called CMYK. 
Maybe you've heard of it before. Printers. Yes. What she's talking about. All printers, if you're printing, if you're doing an advert that needs to be printed, you use CMYK color. So if you're designing in Photoshop, you have to design and export it, for example, in CMYK. Otherwise, the color that they print and the color you designed in is not going to be the same. And uh, CMYK stands for cyan, which is blue, magenta, which is, uh, uh, is the reddish type color, yellow, which is the Y, and black, which is a K. CMYK. Ever heard of CMYK besides Ms. Toots? Okay, what is the color system they use for online? Anyone know? Color system they use for online. It's three, three letters. I'll, I'll tell you, don't worry. It's called RGB. Red, green, and blue. RGB. This is the system used for online. So if you're designing for online, you'll most likely be designing in RGB. Okay? Although the, the systems that you the programs that you use might the free programs might not have these different systems. And then you can see the differences. Okay. Check this out in terms of color. Uh, it's good to know what types of colors work with what types of uh, brands or what types of industry. <laughs> So check this out, they asked people what was their favorite color, and 42% was blue. That's the main favorite. Who here's favorite color is blue? One, two, three. Whose favorite color is green? That was the second favorite color. Whose favorite color is purple? One, two, three. Interesting. Whose favorite color is red? That was the next one. One, two, three, four. These must be fiery people whose favorite color is red. What about black? Really, it does not really a color, but okay. Your favorite color is black. That's weird, I must be honest with you. Black, is that why you're all wearing black? Jay, did you also say black? You know, that's funny, that's also my favorite color. Gray. <laughs> right, so, okay, uh, then I've got white. Your favorite color is yellow. Sunny people, yes, I can see, very sunny. Uh, you said your favorite color is black. Oh, Nicole. Sorry. Anyways, so um, think about what colors uh, people like. And um, check this out. Males, favorite color, mostly blue, and then green and black. Woman, actually also blue, and then purple. Interestingly. Um, so think about who you're designing for, and uh, then you can choose colors based on that. Least favorite colors was orange and maroon. Uh, yellow and grey, interestingly enough. Uh, okay, then there are certain colors that relate to certain characteristics. So, for example, reliability. Most of the time, if you want to show forth reliability, people associate reliability with blue and black. Trust, blue and white. Speed, red. Okay. Speed is red. Then there's also color trends. If you go online and you type in 2019 color trends, you will find out what colors are currently being used in fashion and in design, and then you can use similar colors in your designs to stay with the trend. Like a few years ago, the colors from the 70s and the 80s were coming back. It's all these like metallic type blues, and uh, yeah, I looked at it and I was like, that's so 70s and 80s. Okay, check this out. What color should you use in marketing? This wheel might be helpful to you. Credible, powerful, professional is black. Uh, youthful, excitement, bold is red. Friendly, cheerful, confidence. Peaceful, growth, health, green. Right, so think about what colors mean and then you can use it in your marketing. Okay. The crap layout. The key to impactful design. The crap layout. Stands for... Contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. These are all important keys and characteristics with design. Let's first talk about contrast. Check this out. Do you think that that design works? Do you think it works? Do you, does it, is it impactful? No? Works for me. It works for me. I think it works. It's purple with the... With this kind of like interesting goldish pink color at the back. Anyways, we have different perspectives. That's okay. The point is that that 
It works. Why? Because of the contrast between the yellow and the pink and this bold purple in the middle. Can you see what's written here? You can, can't you? Would you have been able to see it as clearly if she was in, if the image was its, its normal color? No. So the contrast creates this interesting dimension where you can see the font better. Okay. So think about using contrast in your designs. Here's another contrast between the numbers, the people, and the text at the bottom. Okay? Contrast. Here's another one, just a very simple one. Where would you click? Where would your eye go to if you were looking at this website? The top, and then where? This yellow block, isn't it? Why did they do it that way? Because they want you to click there. Can you see that? So increase the color, create a contrast between the background and what you want people to go to. Use color to do that. Okay. Yeah, again, contrast. Where's your eye going first here? 25% off, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Why? Well, how did they get that right for, to get your eye to go there? The font is massive in comparison to the other text. Where would your font, where would your eyes go immediately after this? Right, save now and then probably Viking refrigerators. So they, uh, remember in the beginning we talked about what do you want people to read first, what do you want them to read second, what do you want them to read third. You can, you can ensure that by using these types of techniques. Okay. Repetition. Check out this. They've got the circle here on the left. Then they've got again the circle in the middle. And then they, can you see again they've got the circle on the right. Repetition. Getting your eye to flow. There we go. Your eye is flowing like that. Here's more repetition. The birds, this balloon... Uh, yeah, some Coca-Cola using repetition and Heinz using repetition in advertising. Yes, yes KitKat using repetition. Have you ever noticed this? KitKat, and then it says KitKat on the chocolate bar, and then it says KitKat again. See that? KitKat, 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 KitKat. Right? Repetition. And there's McDonald's using some uh, repetition. If you walk past the bus stop, you'll see this 200 meters, and then you'll see 197 meters immediately afterwards. Right? It's quite clever, I think. Anyways, let's talk about alignment. This is very important. Guys, when you're doing design for online purposes, never, ever create a collage. Do you know what a collage is? It's like when you cut out little photos and you stick them all together. I've seen you've done posters for, for, for communication like that. This nice poster and all these little pictures. Oh, fine, fine, fine. That's fine because it was it was it was for a poster. But if it was an online poster, then you cannot use that. That's not how we that's not how we see online. We use grids. We use grids for online. Okay? Check this out. Check them designing in a grid here. A grid format. Check this out. Grid, you see everything is perfectly aligned. Okay, the gaps are the same. The gaps over here are the same. On the design programs, please make sure that you use the grid system to align your stuff in the center. Even on PowerPoint, there are options for that. Here again, 127 hours uh, poster in the middle, in the center. Okay? It's just our eyes, it's just pleasant to your eye when things are aligned. It's not pleasant for your eye when things aren't aligned because then you almost have to align it with your brain. Like, why? come this way. <laughs> Don't be there on the left, come this way. So, it's just a pleasant experience for your eyes when things are aligned. So, this is the edge structure. Uh, you can see there that the edge of that links with the edge of that. Okay. Here's another one, a website. You'll see the grid structure there. I'm sure you can see it. There's the grid structure. This works for online, because we want to be able to find information quickly and easily. Okay, proximity has to do with how close and far away things are, like you'll notice in this <coughs> advert. They use specific uh, things that are, uh, they use specific spacings to get things uh, in, 
to use proximity. Here's another example. You'll see that they, they put everything in certain blocks. They, they design blocks with certain um, specific gaps in between to ensure the right proximity. Okay, now we've talked about the crap layout. Let's talk about visual impact. Check this out. Which one are you more likely to read? The one on the left or the one on the right? The one on the right. Why? Less information. It's to the point. Online is very important. Most people don't read online. They skim. So you need to not have too much information in your design. Uh, sometimes uh, students, when they do design work, there's too much in the poster. It must just be simple to the point. Um, don't try and put too much detail. Check this out. Yes, yes, lots of detail here that no one's going to read. People are only going to read that and that, isn't it? Here's also the coffee you see and the perfect you see. <laughs> and Starbucks you see. And you see the coffee. So try not to use too much information. Many of you should already be familiar with a little bit of design because of Instagram. Yeah? You know about having a photo and having a little bit of text. Which one would you say is better? The one on the left or the one on the right? Isn't it? So much more impactful. Okay, so this, this works. This guy is a tax preparation department. He's an accountant. So this design works for him because then he's an accountant. It's got his name. It's got his picture. It's got his details. Yeah, so it works as for an accountant. But does it work for a band? Does that style of design work for a band? Would you say, would you go to a rock band? It looks like it's, they're performing at a funeral. Isn't it? It doesn't look like they're a rock band. So you need to use the right type of design uh, style for what the genre that you're designing for. Okay, yeah, just some more examples, but I'll send these to you. Okay, let's get to some graphic design tips. That was more theory. Let's get to some very important design tips for online. We've talked about using different, two different types of fonts at the same time. Contrasting fonts. You'll see this one is interesting with that one. They, they work well together on a nice background. Matching colors. This one also matched the colors. Can you see the C color there is matched with the font here? Here again, the colors of the flowers are matched with the color of the fonts. Check this. This is the example I wanted to give you with grids. This looks like it's uh, made by a child. child. Children like to make collages. Online, we use grids. It's good to use icons like this in your designs. You can find lots of icons online. And what's nice is you can use this transparent options. Maybe I don't know if Instagram has those options to make something transparent like that. No? The, this we call the opacity. Have you heard that word before? Opacity. So if it's 100% opacity, it, this, this leaf would be white. As we bring the opacity lower, it becomes more transparent. Okay? So maybe this is at 50% opacity at the moment. Okay? Uh, icons are also nice to use when you want to illustrate specific details or statistics. So yeah, they've used the circle icons to separate and kind of um, get your eye to focus on these statistics. So use icons with your text. There again, icon to illustrate uh, email support. And yeah, they've used lines. Check this out. Try and use lines in your design to separate certain things. And mostly the eye goes where? It goes in between the two lines. So you can use lines quite nicely uh, in this way. Oh, this has got to do with co um, uh, uh, color issues. This has got to do with the saturation of the color. Maybe you're familiar with filters and editing images. But uh, which, which two of these would you say looks more appetizing? Why? Looks more real. Looks more vibrant. How did they get this right? How did they get it from there to here? Using uh, editing software. They increased the saturation. That means that they increased the amount of color 
in the photo. So please make sure that your colors are popping. You know, you've heard that term? It was pop. That's not popping. Right? I don't know what that looks like. It looks more like a potato than, than, a, than a nachi. Yeah, it's terrible. Okay. Check this out. Cropping. Have you heard the word crop? What does that mean? When you cut. Yeah. So check this out. They crop the photo in order to fit the words in. To fit the copy in. Words in design, we use the term copy. This is the copy. Copy is the text. Okay? You've heard that before? Copy. C-O-P-Y is the text. In, when you're typing a Word document, that's just <laughs> typing. But in design, it's the copy and then the image. So you then crop the image to fit the copy in the between two mountains. So uh, make sure that you know about cropping. Oh, this is what I was talking about. If you want to use an image for your background, that's fine. But then you must either darken the image, or you must change the contrast like that other image, or you must create a block for your text, a see-through, not a see-through, yeah, a type of see-through block for your text, because it doesn't work if you can't read the text. Okay, um, make sure that you use consistent elements for your brand. If you found a style of design for your brand, make sure that you keep that style throughout your designs. You're not having something randomly bright green here. You know, that wouldn't work with this brand style. Yeah, you can see that they've, uh, for their Facebook page, they've got this image in the background that is a similar color to their logo. So try and use this kind of a, a combinations when you're doing your uh, social media stuff. Scale is size. When we in design, we use the term scale to refer to size. So this is a scaled text, scaled copy. That means it's increased in size. And we've talked a little bit about that already. Uh, scale and how that can really draw people's attention. Please don't use more than three different types of fonts in your design at once. Uh, it, it really is a hindrance. Try and actually keep it down to two if you can. Be careful with your colors. Okay, clean, crisp. Fonts are feelings too. Okay, alignment I've talked about. Keep it simple. Keep, make sure that if you have multiple pages on your website, please. Use the same style. If your heading is a specific font on this page, make sure that it's the same font on the other pages. If the headings are uh, 48 points, make sure that all the headings are 48 points. Make sure, you know, just keep it kind of consistent. Create your own style. Don't copy. You can obviously lend designs from others and get ideas, but uh, try and create your own style. Use white space. I've talked about that before. Research. Do some research before you just design something. Go and see what other uh, people have designed. Where are places that you can go and do research on other designs? Do you know of any websites where you can gain insights on what other people have designed? There's a great website that starts with a P where you can go and look for other designs. Yes, yes Pinterest. You type in anything and Thousands of designs will come up where you can get some the ideas. Instagram, as far as I know, is more photos than designs, whereas Pinterest has tons of designs. Okay. Be conscious of current events. You can use certain events and certain styles of events within your design. Uh, so be be. Think outside the box, and then finally, think about who you are designing for. Design for your target audience, what they like to see, how they like to look. Go look at some other websites and other designs about people who are, are, are of those websites that your customers also like to visit, and you will get a sense of what they like. What they like. Okay, as I've said before, you can go to Pinterest to get inspired, and. You can go to canva.com forward slash hashtag design dash stream. There are also lots of designs being designed. And for more design tips, you can go to 
canva.com forward slash learn forward slash professional dash design dash tips for more ideas regarding design. Okay, let's quickly look at some design tools. So the first one that you're going to be using to create all your designs is this tool called Canva. C-A-N-V-A. Who's done any designs on Canva yet? No? Okay, well you're going to get a lot of opportunity to create some designs. It's a free program. Oh, it's a free online program. And it's really great. It works really well. There's free icons, there's free images, there's design styles that you can just change. It's really great. And it's free. So you're going to be creating, using Canva to create a lot of your designs. Then there's this, um, <coughs> what do you call it? It's a, it's, a, it's a Chrome extension, a Google Chrome extension called Color Picker. Sorry, it's called Eyedropper, but it's a color picker. So it's very clever because let's say you're on a website and you really like the color that this one website is using. How are you going to know what color that is? You don't. So, you use Color Picker, and what it does is, if you click on the Color Picker and you click on the, the color, it will pop out the color's uh, kind of code. Every color has a code. Did you know that? Online. It's called the hex color. H-E-X. It's called the hex code. Okay? Hex code. And it starts with a hashtag. It starts with a hashtag, and then I think there's six letters afterwards. So, for example, the hashtag 0000000 is which color? White. Okay? White. Other, other, in HTML, it's, it's different. It's F, 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 F. That's in HTML. The HTML code. That's white. Okay? HTML codes are different from normal color codes, but it's fine. Um, Google will pick up, or Google Color Picker will pick up the code. Then what do you do? Let's say you want to use that code. You copy the code, and you go and put it into Canva. Okay, it will ask you, when you pick the color, you will see there's usually a color, a color wheel, and you can pick the color, but yeah, in the bottom right, there's a little space with a code. All you do is you copy that code, and you paste it into that box, boom, up comes the color. It's very important. What else is very important is that you, when you find a color code for your design, for your logo, let's say it's your logo, and there's two colors that you're using, you must make sure that going forward you save your codes because in all your future designs you need to use the same color, exactly the same color, not a green that looks similar to the green you use, but exactly the same green. So you must save your color codes. Okay, and there's an example of the color wheel at Adobe, that's also free, you can go and check out all kinds of colors and color combinations and contrasting colors that are opposite of the wheel, um, and it's a great, uh, a great tool to use. Okay, and there are some more design tools, you can go check out those websites which I put there for you, you you'll get the PowerPoint, you can click on them and... Go and get those. Okay, lastly, part four. Design, training, and practice. Let's get practical. So, you're going to have to do this design school. It's a school that Canva runs where they teach you how to design using Canva. And they teach you how to do various uh, designs. Very simple. Um, and there are four things that I want you to design. Four things in total I want you to design for next week. Which you're going to bring to glass and hand in. Four things. Okay, number one. You're going to design a logo. A logo for your website. Okay, there's your logo. There's your website. Remember how I talked about the logo? What you want to do with your logo is you want to have an icon and you want to have your name in a specific font. Now, you can use a, a random icon uh, that you relate to your brand, to you as a person. You can find an icon. Or you can create an icon out of the first, uh, with, with your um, initials. 
So let's say I did something, you know, random, like, you know, random D and an H, like this. DH. Or DC, actually, it would be DC. DC. And then I would have here Dylan Cromart. And maybe I would have something cool like a line here. And then I would have, maybe I, if you want to, you could have a strap line for your brand. Like, remember mine from first year would be innovation in education. If I wanted to have a strap line, but you might not want to have a strap line. You might just want to do something like that. Anyways, you need to design a logo. It has to have an icon, and it has to have your name. And you can go and look at other designs by searching uh, personal logos, or personal professional logos, uh, and to go look at what other people have designed. I think in the previous presentation I gave some examples. Then what you want to do, the second design I want you to make, is um, I want you to do a banner for your website. Banner design for your website. You would use a similar design for your Facebook page. So you need to go find the dimensions for a Facebook page, and then you need to design this. So this would be different. This would, might include an image that's related to your brand uh, with some writing. I don't know. You can go and have a look. Okay. Then, uh, two, I want you to design two widget squares. Two widget squares. This is for your website. You would create, use, you're often going to use squares in your design. Not just squares, actually. Sometimes you're going to use little tri uh, rectangles for Facebook. I don't know if you've seen in Facebook, when you, when you post up a Facebook post, there's like this little, um, it's not square, it's like rectangular, and then there's the heading of the blog post and a little bit of writing. Have you seen that before? So you're going to have to do those as well, but for now it's fine. Just do two squares for your website, and the squares can be related to anything that uh, you want your, your customers to click through. Eventually you might create a blog post on what you're going to create in the squares for. So I'll give an example. Uh, in, your other, in the other group, uh, there's a, a student by the name of Jody, and he's going to be focusing on alcohol. I don't know if you guys know Jody. He's going to be doing alcohol. So I'm just going to use him as, as an example. Let's say he does a blog post on, the on, on a review on 12 whiskeys. So he's going to buy a little bit of the whiskey, he's going to taste the whiskey, he's going to have a photo of each of the whiskeys, and he's going to do a review on each of the whiskeys. And he wants, really wants people to click through to that blog post because he thinks that's a great blog post and he wants to get a lot of traffic there because it shows a lot of things about him. So then he might design a widget, right, that has a kind of bottle of whiskey in the background and a little caption that says whiskey review. Top 12 whiskeys or, or my, my, you know, my thoughts on the 12 top whiskeys. And then he'll use that and people will click through to his blog post. So there might be some blog posts that you want to specifically direct people to when they get onto your homepage. And, or there might be other things. Let's say um, you want people to go through to your CV. So you do a little design and you put there, my CV. Click through. Right? You can decide what you want to put here. It's up to you. Those are the four designs that I would like you to make next week. You are welcome to make any other designs as well. It's your choice. How do you hand this in? You're going to design them, then you're going to print them on one A4 piece of paper and hand it in. With your name and your number on top. Simple as that. And you're going to use Canva to do it. All of you need to use Canva. Any questions? How does it sound for you? Fine? Great. This is your first design work. There's going to be more design work going forward, but it's okay for now. Just do those designs. Okay, thank you very much.